Tonight, breaking news, another passenger plane, an emergency landing in the east in the middle of the storm right on the highway. The images coming in, the plane taking off in the snowstorm from Washington's Dulles Airport, making an emergency landing just minutes later. And tonight, the growing toll across the country, at least 50 deaths now in 13 states blamed on the storms. And the brutal cold now moving in this weekend when this breaks. Rob Marciano timing it out. And the other scare tonight. Oh my God, it's on fire. A Boeing 747 cargo jet flames shooting from the engine just after takeoff. The pilot declaring a mayday. A hole found above the engine, Victor Akendo tonight. The breaking news late today, actor Alec Baldwin indicted by a grand jury. Kata Whitworth reporting. Four days now until the New Hampshire primary, the major snub tonight for Nikki Haley. Donald Trump endorsed by former candidate and South Carolina Senator Tim Scott, who was appointed to the Senate by Nikki Haley. Rachel Scott in New Hampshire. The Israel-Hamas war tonight, a member of the Israeli war cabinet, now saying the release of the hostages should come before the killing of the enemy. He's now calling for new elections for a new leader. As we hear tonight, the harrowing story of a son held hostage, freed, but his father still being held back up in, in Israel. The U.S. launching new airstrikes on the Iranian-backed militants, the Houthi rebels in Yemen. Tonight, our Maggie Rooley on board an American warship in the eastern Mediterranean. Here at home tonight, the new alert from the CDC this evening about respiratory illness in this country. 23 states dealing with significant illness, and we'll take you through it. The sad news coming in tonight involving the iconic magazine Sports Illustrated. And we've reported on the dogs being saved, the heroic efforts. But tonight, the dog who saved her owner. You will hear the dog sending a message to the rescuers. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Friday night. We begin tonight with yet another passenger plane and the emergency landing in the middle of the storm system hitting the east today. The plane taking off from Washington's Dulles Airport and landing on a Virginia highway just minutes later. The small commuter plane making an emergency landing on that highway in Loudoun County, Virginia. It wasn't long after taking off, the pilot declaring a mayday in the middle of bad weather. Federal authorities are on the scene tonight. Everyone on board was okay. At this hour, alerts from the Midwest all the way to the East Coast. Snow, ice, and a new cold blast moving in. And tonight, the toll growing across the country. At least 50 people killed now across 13 states from these storms. Today, Philadelphia declaring a snow emergency, getting nearly half a foot of snow in some parts. Schools were closed today. And Buffalo tonight, look at this, digging out from five feet of snow this week. And now the wind chills this weekend, well below freezing from Dallas to Chicago to New York City. Rob Marciano has the forecast and ABC's Ariel Reshef leading us off. Tonight, that passenger plane making an emergency landing on a busy Virginia highway in the middle of a snowstorm. 246 on the ground. Uh, 246, you say you're on the ground? We are on the ground. We just landed. The Southern Airways Express flight departed Dulles Airport shortly before 1 p.m., headed for Pennsylvania with seven people on board, declaring a mayday just minutes after takeoff. Witnesses praising the pilot expertly landing the plane under traffic lights. Jesse LaBelle says it flew right over him. Heard a loud noise, thinking you know, my car blew up or something. Um, and, you know, I look up and there's a plane 20 feet above me um, and lands 30 feet in front of me. Good Samaritans rushing to make sure everyone was okay. Our Ike Jachi on scene. Take a look. You can see that plane that's been down right behind me. The FAA is currently on scene investigating what could have possibly caused this emergency. Amazingly, no one injured. That same winter system slamming major cities along the East Coast. Up to half a foot of snow falling in Philadelphia. An emergency snow declaration in effect here in Philly. You can see the city skyline completely obscured by the snow. This is the second snowstorm in just a week. This city on pace to more than double the amount of snow it's seen so far this season. After days of brutal weather, the death toll rising nationwide. At least 50 people killed across 13 states. And we're learning more about the five family members, all women, tragically killed Tuesday on Interstate 81 north of Scranton, Pennsylvania. Karwan Zabari lost two sisters, Berevin and Havrist, and his niece, Aline. When we spoke to the coroner and the, and the state trooper, they called it a freak accident, very unlucky where everything that could go wrong went wrong. 
Just an awful story for that family. Ariel Reshef with us tonight from New Jersey, where I know there's a state of emergency still in effect from the storms, Ariel. But I wanted to get back to that emergency landing in Virginia right after takeoff from Dulles Airport. What more have we learned tonight? Well, David, the NTSB is investigating reports that the engine lost power just after takeoff. You can see that plane being towed off of the highway again. David, pretty miraculous. No one was hurt there. Two nights in a row of these emergency landings in bad weather. Ariel, thank you. Let's get right to senior meteorologist Rob Marciano timing this out. And of course, Rob, everyone asking, when does this finally break? Well, we'll get some more of eventually, but it's going to be another brutal weekend with cold air coming in behind this latest snowstorm. We've got wind chill warnings all the way down into the Mid-South and hard freeze warnings down to the Gulf of Mexico. Look, at it, it's going to feel like 12 degrees or thereabouts in uh, Dallas tomorrow morning. Minus two in Nashville, 14 below on Sunday in Chicago, Philly, D.C., Ball, uh, Baltimore. The snow is going to stick around at least through the weekend. But here comes the warm-up beginning early to mid next week. Well above average temperatures for the eastern half of the country. That should melt a fair amount of that snow. And the Pacific is getting active. So a series of rainstorms coming into the west coast. So keep your rain gear handy in California. Keep the hat and gloves in, in reach here in the east because this weekend will be cold. But there is hope coming in a few days. David, always bringing us the hope. Rob Marciano on a Friday night. Rob, thanks. There was yet another air scare, a Boeing 747 cargo jet with one engine on fire just after takeoff from Miami International Airport. You can see the flames here shooting from the engine. The pilot then declaring a mayday, requesting clearance to land right away. Once on the ground, a hole was found right above that engine. ABC's Victor Akendo from Miami tonight. Oh my God, it's on fire. Tonight, the terrifying oh scene in the skies over Miami. I hope they're okay. Melanie Aderos recording this video while out on a walk with her mother. I didn't know if those were pieces of plane falling off, if it was going to explode or fall out of the sky. The sparks shooting out from the engine of an Atlas Air cargo plane just minutes after it departed Miami International Airport after 10 p.m. Thursday for Puerto Rico. Mayday, Mayday, uh, Giant 095 heavy uh, engine fire. Request section back to the airport. The Boeing 747 with five people on board. John 95, how are you? Which engine and is it out already or you guys are still trying to uh, work that out? It's engine number two. Tonight, an FAA incident report revealing a softball size hole above the number two engine. Atlas Air saying in a statement that the crew followed all standard procedures and safely returned to the airport. This plane, different from the Boeing MAX 9s, grounded earlier this month after a door plug detached 16,000 feet in the air. Following this latest incident, the jet maker facing increasing scrutiny. The FAA and the NTSB are investigating. Tonight, Boeing says it is supporting Atlas Air and the investigation. David? Victor Kendo live in Miami tonight. Victor, thank you. We're going to turn now to the news breaking late today. Actor Alec Baldwin has been indicted by a grand jury. After the original charges against him were dismissed, He's now facing a new charge of involuntary manslaughter. So what changed? Here's Kana Whitworth tonight. This is a crime scene. Exactly one year after Alec Baldwin was initially charged in the Rust movie shooting and later saw the case dropped, tonight, the actor charged yet again with involuntary manslaughter. I was the one holding the gun, yeah. Okay. A New Mexico grand jury indicting the actor in the October 2021 death of cinematographer Helena Hutchins killed when the revolver Baldwin was rehearsing with fired a live bullet. Back in April, special prosecutors dropping initial charges against the actor after sources say the gun was determined to be mechanically improper. But nearly six months later, after receiving new analysis of that gun and expert testimony, prosecutors announcing they would seek to recharge him, saying additional facts have come to light that show Mr. Baldwin has criminal culpability. In an interview with George Stephanopoulos weeks after the shooting, Baldwin adamant he did not pull the trigger. So you never pulled the trigger? No, 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 no. I, I would never point a gun at anyone and pull a trigger at them, never. Tonight, Baldwin's lawyer saying in a statement, we look forward to our day in court. David, prosecutors plan to present two different theories to the jury. One, that Baldwin was reckless in how he handled the gun, or two, that he was negligent. The trial is expected to start sometime this year. David. Kena Whitworth from California. Kena, thank you. We turned out of the race for president tonight. We are just four days now until the New Hampshire primary. And tonight, the major snub for Nikki Haley. Donald Trump has been endorsed by South Carolina Senator Tim Scott, who was appointed to the Senate by Nikki Haley when she was governor. ABC's Rachel Scott in New Hampshire tonight. Tonight, just four days before the New Hampshire primary, a big boost for Donald Trump. Hello, New Hampshire! 
an endorsement from his former rival, South Carolina Senator Tim Scott. We need Donald Trump. It's a blow to Nikki Haley. She was the South Carolina governor who actually appointed Scott to his Senate seat. But now Scott, who is the nation's top black Republican elected official, is going for Trump. So good to see you. Thank you for taking the time to be here. We'll get everybody out on Tuesday. Tell everybody you know. Haley's team, once predicting a landslide win in New Hampshire, now lowering expectations. The road is never going to stop here in New Hampshire. That's always been the plan. Strong in Iowa, stronger in New Hampshire, and even stronger in South Governor, Carolina. Governor. Haley has been under relentless attack from Trump. She's not going to make it. She has no chance. She's got no way. Megan's not going to be with her. But she has largely held off attacking him. I asked her if that was a mistake. Should you have gone after Trump harder? We had 14 people in the race at one time. This was never about, it was about how do you get the field smaller? We now have the field to where it's a two-person race. Now that it's a two-person race, we're talking about the contrast. Trailing far behind Haley and Trump here in New Hampshire, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. He's now staking his campaign on a strong showing in the South Carolina primary more than a month from now. Governor DeSantis, standing here today, do you believe that you can defeat Donald Trump and become the Republican nominee? As long as I'm, uh, as long as I'm in the hunt, um, that that tells me that I have uh, that I'm seeing a pathway. The minute I don't, then I'm not just going to do this for, um, you know, just for my health. DeSantis would not answer what his path to the nomination is or what state he believes that he could win. The Florida governor will spend the final weekend before the New Hampshire primary campaigning in South Carolina tonight. It's unclear if he will return to the state before the results come in on Tuesday night, David. Rachel Scott live at a Nikki Haley rally there in Manchester, New Hampshire tonight. Just a few days left. All right. Thank you, Rachel. We turn next tonight to the Israel-Hamas war. President Biden speaking with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu for the first time in nearly a month today. The White House says among the issues, the two leaders talking about a possible two-state solution once the war is over. Just yesterday, Netanyahu signaled he opposed the idea. The White House tonight saying President Biden still stands behind a two-state solution and believes it is possible, but that it will require hard work. And tonight from Israel, a member of the Israeli War Cabinet saying the release of the hostages should come before the killing of the enemy. He's now calling for new elections for a new leader. And tonight here, we hear the harrowing story of a young son held hostage by Hamas, freed, but his father still being held. Matt Gupman is in Israel. Tonight, if 13-year-old Yigil Yaakov fears for his father's life, that's because he knows what he's going through. Yigil himself had been a hostage in Gaza for over 50 days until he was released in November. On October 7th, entire families were carted into Gaza. Yigil, his brother, his father, Yair, and stepmother, all taken. His mother ran an on the phone with her boys when they were kidnapped, hearing everything. The last thing I heard him say on the phone when the phone was still on was, uh, you contact me, I'm too young. Yigil says they marched him out. <laughs> he says, they took me out with a knife held to my throat and I was in my boxers. They put me on a motorcycle. For 30 days, he was held alone by a family in Gaza. At one point, the Islamic Jihad produced a proof of life video of him. He says, I hope that I come back as soon as possible. Just before Yagil was released, he reunited with his stepmother and his brother. What was it like to see your brother again after 52 days? <laughs> Crazy. The two walking hand in hand to the Red Cross. But the boy's father, Yair, who was wounded on October 7th, is still being held. We want these people to get back home alive. And David, that Israeli war cabinet minister you mentioned, whose son was killed in the fighting, now openly criticizing Netanyahu, saying Hamas is not going to be defeated, that the only way to bring the hostages back home is through a deal with Hamas. And when asked by an interviewer whether the Israeli public was being misled by uh, the Israeli government, he said yes. David. Yeah, that made immediate news overnight in Israel. Matt Gutman tonight. Matt, thank you. Meantime, there are more signs tonight of military escalation from the region. Tonight, the U.S. launching new airstrikes on the Iranian-backed militants, the Houthi rebels in Yemen. ABC's Maggie Ruley tonight on board an American warship in the eastern Mediterranean. Tonight, the U.S. launching a new series of strikes against Iranian-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen. This is the fourth preemptive action that the U.S. military has taken in the past week against Houthi missile launchers that were ready to launch attacks. The Houthis have launched more than 30 attacks at commercial shipping since late November, including two this week that damaged U.S.-owned transport ships in the Red Sea. 
Trying to prevent a wider regional war is why the U.S. has more than a dozen Navy ships patrolling Middle Eastern waters. The U.S. Navy takes us to the USS Arleigh Burke, a guided missile destroyer in the Mediterranean. This destroyer is nearly identical to the one the Navy has right now in the Red Sea. On board, you can see they have torpedoes, they have harpoon missiles, and underneath this launch pad, they have tomahawks ready to launch at a moment's notice. We're shown the crew drilling, often with just minutes to intercept an incoming missile. Is deterrence working in this war? So deterrence does work. Sometimes it doesn't, it's not a zero-sum game, but it minimizes the, imp the overall impact by reminding our allies and partners that we're here to support them. And David, the Burke, alongside this ship we're on now, the USS Baton, can carry roughly 2,500 Marines and Navy sailors. Together, they combine to make a strike group ready to go at a moment's notice. David. Maggie really and her team on the USS Baton. Maggie, thank you. Back here in the U.S. tonight, President Biden for giving another $5 billion in student loan debt. The Biden administration canceling student loan payments for roughly 74,000 more. More than half of these people are public servants, including teachers, nurses, firefighters. The White House tonight saying it has now canceled student debt for more than 3.7 million Americans. One more note on the economy tonight, the stock market ending the week on a very strong note. The Dow gaining 395 points today, closing at 37,863. The S&P 500 closing at an all-time high of 4,839 points. It's the first record high close in two years. When we come back on a Friday night, news of an earthquake coming in now, rocking part of Alaska. Also, the CDC alert tonight about respiratory illness, 23 states. And the sad news tonight involving the iconic magazine Sports Illustrated. Tonight, there is breaking news out of Alaska. Reports of an earthquake hitting the center of that state, the 5.3 magnitude quake uh, just south of Fairbanks. They did feel this, but so far, no reports of injuries. Or damage. Tonight, the CDC is reporting on respiratory illness in this country. They say 23 states still experiencing high or very high levels of flu, COVID, RSV, and the common cold. You see them lit up there. They say the number of cases elsewhere is beginning to slow. When we come back here, the sad turn for the iconic Sports Illustrated magazine. And news tonight on the electric Ford F-150 and about 1,400 workers. To the index and tonight, Ford says it's slowing production of its electric F-150 Lightning truck. The company says its electric vehicle growth is moving slower than expected. 1,400 workers are being taken off that production line. Some are getting buyouts. About 900 workers are moving to another assembly line. Sad news tonight for the iconic Sports Illustrated magazine with questions about its future now. A union official say the publisher today told the staff most of their jobs were being eliminated, calling on the magazine's owner, Authentic Brands Group, to keep the publication running. When we come back here tonight, the dog Ruby and her owner who had fallen through the ice and what Ruby did. Finally tonight here, Ruby to the rescue, our persons of the week. Tonight in Grand Traverse County, Michigan, the incredible rescue and the incredible bond between a dog and her owner. Is that him right there? Yeah. yeah. Michigan State Police Officer Cameron Bennett's responding to a 911 call. A 65 year old man had fallen into an icy lake. His dog Ruby right next to him. Ruby on the ice, and she knew that her owner was in trouble. I got a rescue disc. I don't know if he can get a hold of this disc or not. Officer Bennett's rushing toward the man, the officer's body cam capturing the whole thing. All right, you ready? I'm going to see if I can get this to you. The officer throwing a rescue disc, but it doesn't reach the man. But the quick thinking officer has an idea. Perhaps the man's dog can help. Send your pup here. Will she come to me? The man in the water telling the officer yes. His dog's name is Ruby. Ruby, come here. Come here, Ruby. Officer Bennett attaches the orange rescue disc to Ruby's collar. Collar, collar. The dog's owner in the water calling his dog's name and watch Ruby running toward him with the disc. Get a hold of that disc. Kick your feet back. Bring your feet up to the surface by kicking your feet. Officer Bennett begins to pull the man out. Keep pulling on that disc. Pull, pull, pull. He's out of the water. Oh. A firefighter also on the scene crawling to the man, Ruby staying right by her owner's side. Just stay around your belly. Keep your hands stay around your belly. The officer and the firefighter both grabbing the man's hands and taking him to a waiting ambulance. Tonight, both he and Ruby are now home and doing well. And tonight, that quick acting officer, Cameron Bennett's grateful for the assist from Ruby. Come here. The only other tool I had was Ruby. She knew dad was in trouble and she knew she had to do something to help too and she could. He was in the water for approximately 16 minutes. It is a miracle that everything was as good as it was. And so we choose that officer, the firefighter, 
and of course, Ruby. I'm David Muir. I'll see you Monday. Good night. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.